What will we find in today's Thursday thrillers here on the Mutual Audio Network? A few baffling mysteries? Perhaps a touch of murder? Let's find out. The following audio drama is rated PG for parental guidance recommended. Welcome to Hot Copy Radio Theater. You are about to hear a cast of very talented voice performers recreate a long-lost episode of Hot Copy, an exciting audio drama about the wild adventures of a young woman newspaper reporter, which was broadcast on the NBC radio network between 1941 and 1944. This recreation is adapted from the original script. Now, sit back, relax, and enjoy. It's time for Hot Copy, the vivid drama behind the paragraphs of a daily newspaper column. Hot Copy is the absorbing story of a young newspaper woman, Anne Rogers, a clever, attractive girl with a nationally syndicated column, Second Glance, in which she uncovers many events which other, less courageous reporters would be afraid to touch. Her stories, in the words of her adventurous profession, are always Hot Copy. And now, listen to today's new and exciting episode, A Bid for Trouble. Adapted from the original script, as broadcast on radio, on Sunday, June 18th, 1944. Schlegel. Herr Schlegel? Ja, coming. Who is... Ah, so it is you, Stefan. Good. You sent for me? Ja, Stefan. I have for you a small errand. You remember our unfortunate comrade, Herr Dr. von Gruner? Who was by these American swine murdered in a concentration camp? Please, Stefan, do not excite yourself so. Von Gruner was not in a concentration camp, nor was he murdered. On the contrary, these foolish Americans were remarkably courteous to an enemy alien. In fact, the doctors did all in their power to save his life. Von Gruner died a natural death from natural causes. Well, that might be as you say. Anyway, Stefan, today his effects are at a public auction. It is important that we regain the possession of you know what. Yes, of course, Herr Schlegel. But I thought you would be the one to. No, Stefan, I am too well known as an art dealer and a connoisseur to bid publicly on so worthless appearing an article. Therefore, you must do the job. Here is money. Twenty dollars. You should not need very much. Five should be more than enough. But it is better to take no chances. Jawohl, Herr Schlegel. And the lot number? Thirteen, Stefan. Thirteen. <laughs> An unlucky number for the superstitious, but a number that is worth a fortune to us. South, you said, Miss Rogers? Yes, that's right, Mike. It's awfully nice of you to drive us downtown. It sure is, Lieutenant. Ah, don't think nothing of it. Always glad to be able to do something for you and Miss Sprightly. Let's see, 14th Street, that'll be the next block. Now, what kind of a place is it, Miss Anne? An office building? No, Mike. It's an auction house. Auction house? Well, no. That sure sounds interesting. Is there a special sale going on today? Yes, a very special sale. Mike, do you remember Dr. Von Gruner? Von Gruner? That's not the agent that I captured. You captured? Where do you get that stuff? 
Annie was the one who... Well, no, of course I mean me and Anne. I was working together in corporation-like. Of course, Sprightly. <laughs> and it was the lieutenant who put the handcuffs on him. That it was. Anyhow, what about him? Well, Mike, he died about a week or so ago. And since he left no kin in this country, all of his effects are being auctioned today. What? Now look here, Miss Anne. You don't mean to tell me there's something you want from the effects of a dirty Nazi. No, Mike. That's not it at all. I thought it might be a good idea, though, to attend the auction and, well, to get a good look at who else shows up. Annie means, what, with him having been a spy and all that, maybe some of his buddies might show up at the sale. Oh, I see. Eh, well, okay. I guess that's part of your job as a reporter, Miss Anne. But I do hope you ain't comfy letting yourself in for membership in the Rio Rita Club snooping around like this. The Rio Rita Club? What's that, Mike? <laughs> uh, <laughs> that's the name that some of the boys down at police headquarters cooked up for news hounds that's always getting into scrapes. You know, like the ones that you read about in detective stories or see in the movies. But why the name? The Rio Rita Club. That's just an abbreviation. It stands for Rescue in Order, Reporter in Trouble Again. Oh! <laughs> Rescue in Order, Reporter in Trouble Again. That's a good one, Mike. <laughs> oh, I'm definitely going to remember that. You just do that, Miss Anne. Please. Us cops has troubles enough without your reporters making matters worse for us. Oh, cheer up, Lieutenant. Everybody's got troubles. Even the good old St. Patrick probably had a tough time chasing the snakes out of Ireland. <laughs> yeah, he did indeed. God bless his memory. Well, this looks like the place. Bradley and Yates, auctioneers. Yes, this is it. Come on, Sprightly, hurry out. I'm coming. Thanks, Mike. Yeah, okay. See you later. Goodbye. We'll see you soon, Mike. Goodbye. Thanks again. What time is it, Sprightly? It's a little after three. We better hurry. The auction has already started. Eight dollars and fifty cents once, eight fifty twice. Going, going, gone. And now, folks, slot number 11. A handsome ormolu clock with genuine 21 jewel Swiss movement. A showpiece for any home. And a collector's item. What am I bid for this magnificent example of the clockmaker's art? Do I hear a bid for $50? What? No? Do I hear $25? Five dollars. The gentleman over in the corner bids five dollars. Imagine it, only five dollars for this marvelous example of Swiss woodcraft. Five fifty. Six and a half. Seven dollars. We have a bid for seven dollars. So if there are no other bids, sold to the man in the blue jacket for seven dollars. Hmm, not very many people here. Wouldn't you say so, Sprightly? No, just us and a few suckers. See anybody sinister, Annie? No, but you can't tell a crook by his cover, Sprightly. 
Let's stick around for a while. Keep our eyes and ears open. What's that junk pile over there? Is that some other stuff that's being auctioned? I don't know for sure, but I suppose it is. Want to have a look? Why not, since we're here? Now, what am I bid for this valuable ornament? It would add a touch of beauty to any home. Ten dollars. Twelve! Is that your last word, ladies and gentlemen? Do I hear any other bids? No? Sold to this man seated right here in the front row for twelve dollars. <laughs> and now, lot number twelve, a gentleman's collection of Viennese wine glasses. A joy to behold and impossible to duplicate today because of wartime conditions. So, I'll suggest. Let's start the bidding at one hundred dollars. Do I hear a bid for one hundred? I'll bid thirty. I hear a bid for thirty. Will someone make it thirty-five? Thirty-seven. There's a bid for thirty-seven. Does anybody have a bid for forty? Sprightly, look. What's the matter, Annie? Do you see anyone suspicious? No, nothing like that. I just meant. Take a look at this picture on the table in auction lot number thirteen. It's Saint Patrick chasing the snakes out of Ireland. What? No fooling? <laughs> but what's a thing like that doing with von Gruner stuff? I haven't the faintest idea, Sprightly. But what a wonderful gift for Lieutenant Flanagan. You mean for a gag? <laughs> sure. Why not? <laughs> But it seems silly to spend good money for a picture like that. Oh, it couldn't possibly cost more than a dollar or two at most. It's just a cheap lithograph. And now, ladies and gentlemen, if you'll be so kind as to look at our catalog for today's auction, the next item is a rare and valuable reproduction of a famous painting, Saint Patrick and the Serpents. Rare and valuable. Oh, for sure! <laughs> oh my gosh! <laughs> I guess that auctioneer will say anything that he can think of just to make a sale. Now, folks, just one more thing before we begin. Let me draw your attention to the beautifully molded frame on this simply marvelous creation. So, how about we start the bidding at, let's say. Ten dollars for this absolute masterpiece. One dollar. We have a bid for one dollar. Is there a bid for two? Two. Two dollars says the beautiful young lady at the back of the room. Do we have another bid? Three. Three dollars. Now there's a gentleman who knows art. Four. The young lady bids four. Will someone make it five? For this wonderful example of ecclesiast, ecclesia, <coughs> religious artwork. Annie, have you lost your mind? Five. No, I just hate to see anyone. Six. Seven. Eight. Ten dollars. Annie, for Pete's sake, stop! The thing is just not worth that much. Ten dollars says the art-loving gentleman in the corner. Ten dollars. Does anybody have another bid? Sprightly, there's something fishy about this. You're telling me? You said the thing was only worth a couple bucks. It is, and that's why fifteen dollars. Fifteen dollars says the beautiful young lady. Do you hear that, folks? Now here is a lady who knows what this marvelous painting is really worth. So fifteen once, twenty dollars. Anne, let him have it. He must be crazy. Yes, or I am. Twenty, going once, twice, going, going. Twenty-five dollars. Anne Rogers. Twenty-five dollars. Well, folks, are there any other bids? What about from you, sir? I, I, I have a question. Can you take a check? Sorry, my friend. The rules of this auction house require that all payment must be made in cash. 
So, with that being said, I have a bid of twenty-five dollars, and if there are no other bids, sold to the beautiful young lady. Congratulations, Miss. Yeah, congratulations, Annie. You just won the All American Sucker Award for nineteen forty four. Well, Stefan, back so soon? You got it? Where? Herr Schlegel, I. I. Well? Wait one moment. You do not have the picture. Where is it? I. I. There was a woman there, a stupid, silly art lover. She kept on bidding. She bid more money than you gave me. Twenty-five dollars was what she bid. I could go no higher. I offered a check for more, but the auction house would only take cash money. An art lover? The idiot! The picture is worth almost nothing! A dollar! Perhaps two! I'm sorry, sir. I did the best I could. Silence, Domkov. Let me think. A woman, you say. Do you know who she was? Well, no, sir. I did not learn her name. You fool! You blundering incompetent! But I did learn where she lives, sir. I followed her to her apartment after the auction. Ah. So? Yes, sir. Here is the address on this slip of paper. Give it to me. Hmm. Very good. That, that revolver you took from the drawer, sir. You mean to... Stefan, my stupid friend, we are not playing this game for pennies, but for a fortune. I am going to call on this art-loving fool and try to buy from her the picture. And is she will not sell? Then, Stefan, I will be compelled to resort to more exacting measures. We will return to this episode of Hot Copy in just a moment. But first, a word from our sponsor. Hi, I'm Kate. And I am Susie. We are the host of Sinister Junk Mail Podcast. We get together every week to talk about ghosts, aliens, murder, and all the other spooky stuff out there. We dive into the topics that make you want to lock every door in your house and sleep with the lights on. Oh, and don't forget the blanket rule. Whatever is outside of the blanket can be grabbed by a demon. We investigate all of the hard-hitting subjects like, where do we go when we die? Why does every serial killer have mommy issues? And why do aliens go for the butt every single time? We occasionally share our own paranormal experiences, and we encourage our listeners to send us their stories as well so we can feature our favorites on the show. Through our lack of filter and at times abrasive comedy, we put a fun twist on dark topics. But we will ensure that you walk away from the episode filled with interesting but sometimes useless knowledge. Which makes you an absolute delight at parties. Join us every Wednesday for your dose of weekly weirdness. Sinister Junk Mail can be found wherever you get your podcasts. And now, back to Hot Copy. At an auction for the estate of Dr. Von Gruner, a Nazi agent, Anne Rogers paid $25 for a cheap lithograph that is worth no more than a dollar or two. Now, at home in her apartment, she ponders her reason for paying this incomprehensible sum. Ann Rogers, I simply don't understand your shelling out 25 good fish for that cheesy lithograph. Sprightly, I don't understand myself. Then why on earth did you do it? That's a lot of money to pay for a gag, if you ask me. I don't know, Sprightly. I don't know why I did it. Oh, I suppose the lure of an auction probably had something to do with it. I simply hate to have anyone top my bid on anything. Don't you realize, Sugar Plum, that other bidder was probably a shill? Maybe it was someone from the auction house deliberately bidding on it just to try to drive up the price. No, he wasn't, Sprightly. He wanted to keep on bidding, remember? He even asked the auctioneer if he could pay with a check. Well, yes, that's right. 
Darling, I've got a hunch there's more here than meets the eye. Now, where is that picture? I want to take a close look. I'll get it. No, never mind. I'll take it, Sprightly. Hello? Good evening. Is that you, Bizan? Oh, hello, Mike. This is me. <laughs> how are you? Sure, now. And how did you know it was me? I don't know, Mike. Sometimes I think I'm becoming a mind reader. <laughs> What's up? Oh, nothing really. Just called to see how you and Sprightly made out at the auction. Why, it went very well, I think. Now, just what do you mean by that? You didn't get into any trouble, did you? What's he want, Annie? He wants to know if we got into any trouble. Tell him not yet, but we're working on it. <laughs> well, Miss Anne? Hmm? You ain't answered my question yet. Uh, no trouble, Mike. Everything was fine. Just fine. Well, okay. I just wanted to make sure that you and Miss Sprightly wasn't the latest members for the Rio Rita Club. Lieutenant Flanagan, if you called here just to make fun of us... No, honest, Miss Anne. That ain't all I called for. I know that the press club dinner is tonight. I'm presuming that you and Miss Sprightly is going, ain't ya? Why, yes. We are, Mike. Why do you ask? Well... As it happens, I happen to be driving a squad car uptown in a little while. If you want, I'd be glad to give you a lift. Mike, you Irish angel. Well, now, it ain't nothing, really. Oh, but it is. I just thought that seeing as how cabs is so hard to get nowadays. Oh, Mike, you're wonderful. We'll hurry and get ready. See you later. Sure, now, and so long. Till then, Miss Anne. Bye. That old lamb. What now, Annie? Mike is going to give us a lift to the press club dinner, Sprightly. No kidding? Wow. Nothing like having a little boy blue coat for a pal, ain't there? No, there certainly isn't. <laughs> oh, I just looked at my watch. It's six o'clock. We better start getting ready. Sprightly, um, just drop whatever you're doing, go home and get changed. Then hurry and meet me at my apartment. Don't worry, Sugar Plum. It'll only take a minute for me to change into my dinner dress. The main thing that this donut needs is a swift dunk and a fresh dose of powder. Oh, who could that be? You'll never find out by mental telepathy. Why don't you answer it? Yes? Miss Rogers? Yes, I'm Ann Rogers. Miss Rogers, I am August Schlegel. Perhaps you know my name? Schlegel? August Schlegel? The art dealer? Yes, that is me. Of course I know who you are. Please, come in. Thank you. Mr. Schlegel, this is my friend and assistant, Sprightly Pool. Sprightly, this is Mr. Schlegel. Hello, it's nice to meet you. The pleasure is all mine, Miss Poole. Oh, you're simply too kind, Mr. Schlegel. I hope you do not find it inconvenient, dear ladies, that I am intruding upon you like this. Oh, no, don't worry about that. Anne's apartment is about as exclusive as a train station. Really? Oh, Sprightly, please. What Miss Poole means is, we're used to receiving visitors at unusual hours. We work in the newspaper game, and... Then you are not an artist, Miss Rogers? Artist? <laughs> Me? No, I'm afraid not, Mr. Schlegel. Whatever gave you that idea? Well, frankly, my dear young lady, I thought you must be an artist, or at least a connoisseur of the arts. You see, only one who understands and appreciates fine things would have bought that Grogan lithograph, as I understand you did, at the auction today. Grogan lithograph? Hey, you mean that St. Patrick picture that Anne bought is a collector's item? Indeed it is. Do you, do you have it here, Miss Rogers? Why, yes. As a matter of fact, I haven't even unwrapped it yet. It's right here on my coffee table. I've got it, Annie. Here you are. 
I wonder if I might. Certainly. Ah, yes, yes, it is so. It is the Grogan masterpiece. I'm afraid you have an advantage over me, Mr. Schlegel. I don't think I've ever heard of a lithographer named Grogan before. No, such a pity. <clears throat> he was a great man in his field, Miss Rogers. But there are so few people today who remember and appreciate the work of Terence Mahoney Grogan. It is tragic. Golly, Anne. Then that explains why I call so much. The other bidder must have recognized this picture, but he didn't have enough cash on hand to keep bidding. Yes, but this picture, Mr. Schlegel? I don't see any name on it. No mention of the lithographer, I mean. Mr. Grogan was a very humble man. He rarely signed his work. But, to the expert eye, the name of the lithographer is etched into every line. Please note the fine delicacy of the saint's features and the, the vigor and movement of every person and creature within the image. I... I... Miss Rogers? Yes, Mr. Schlegel? Would you sell me this lithograph? Oh, but really, I... I understand that it cost you $25. I am willing to pay 50 in cash, right here and now. 50 fish? Holy Toledo! Annie, um... Uh, Mr. Schlegel, I don't believe I want to... No, wait. There is no reason why I should try to strike a cheap bargain on this deal. I have a customer who will pay handsomely for it, so... I will make you a more fair offer. How about one hundred dollars? Annie, sell it. Quick! Jeepers! Sell it before he changes his mind. Sprightly, I think... Then you will? Good. Miss Rogers, I have the cash right here in my wallet. I'll count it out so there is no mistake. Twenty. Thirty. Forty. No, Mr. Schlegel. Please, don't bother. What? You mean that you... <sighs> My dear young lady, believe me, I am being extremely fair in this offer. I only ask that you check my references. August Schlegel is known everywhere. Listen, I will be perfectly frank with you. The lithograph is honestly worth no more than a hundred, but I know a collector who would pay me a small amount more. My intention is to sell it to him, with practically no commission, so as to earn his goodwill and patronage for more lucrative future deals and purchases. Mr. Schlegel, I too wish to be fair. I have no desire to keep this away from someone who really wants to have it. So I'll tell you what. I will sell you this lithograph for exactly what it cost me. Twenty-five dollars. But Anne! Miss Rogers! If you will answer, to my satisfaction, just one small question. But of course, anything's that I can tell you. Very well, and my question should be extremely simple for you to answer. Mr. Schlegel, how did you know to come here to obtain this lithograph? Uh, why, I'm, um, I, I... Yes? Please, do go on. Well, it's... It was really very easy. From the auction house, they gave me your name, and then I simply looked in the phone book. Uh-oh, I smell something. That's very peculiar, Mr. Schlegel, because, you see, the auction house didn't know my name. I walked in as a stranger. I made a purchase, and I walked out as a stranger. And as for my name and address being in the telephone book, I'm afraid you're badly mistaken. I registered with the phone company to have an unlisted number. It's been unlisted for years. So only my friends, co-workers, and business associates know my home address or my phone number. So, Mr. Schlegel, I will ask you again. How did you know to come here to obtain this lithograph? I see. It appears I have made a small mistake. Didn't I, Miss Rogers? Yes, I'm afraid so. Now, if you don't mind, I'd like to have the picture back. I'd like to examine it more closely. Stand still! Be careful! I'll get it, Annie. Give me that, you. You clumsy fool. Now see what you have done. You have broken the frame. Yes, I see. And... Oh, good heavens. What is it, Annie? Look. 
attached to the reverse of this cheap lithograph. It came loose from the paste when the picture fell. Give me that. It's another picture. A painting. An oil painting. Small, but very beautiful. Let me see. Gosh, yes. And it's signed, Annie. Look there, in the corner. I can't read it very well. Franz. Perhaps I can spare you the effort, Miss Rogers. Allow me to give you the name. It is Franz Halls. Franz Halls? Well, I'll be darned. What do you know about that? Franz Halls. Annie, who is Franz Halls? Just one of the greatest of the old Flemish masters. And I have no doubt that you knew this the entire time, Mr. Schlegel. You knew that under this cheap lithograph there was a concealed priceless painting. Yes, I'm afraid so, my dear. However, this knowledge must not be allowed to spread. Therefore... <gasps> ah! Sprightly! Watch out! He's got a gun! W what are you going to do with that? Unfortunately, the circumstances under which this picture entered America do not permit sharp scrutiny. An investigation would be quite embarrassing to me, so I can take no chances of you revealing. Don't touch that phone! No? It will stop ringing soon. That would be another little mistake, Mr. Schlegel. That call is from our close friend, Lieutenant Flanagan, at the police department. He knows that we are up here. That's right. And if we don't answer, he'll be upstairs to find out what's the matter. Very well. In that case, answer it. But remember, be careful what you say. Not one word about my presence. Understand? Yes, I understand. I will be right beside you, listening. Hello? Oh, hello, Miss Anne. Wake you up? <laughs> oh, no, Mike. We were just... Careful. Just getting dressed. Where are you? I'm downstairs here in the lobby of your building. You and Miss Frightly are almost ready. Well, Mike, as a matter of fact, we... Wished you'd get a wiggle on, Miss Anne. I gotta get this squad car uptown inside of the next 30 minutes or so. What is this all about? Put your hand over the mouthpiece and answer me. He's calling for us. He's here to give us a lift uptown in his car. Well, get rid of him. I can't do that. He's expecting us. He'll be suspicious. Then just tell him you're running late and you'll meet him later. But we can't. Oh, wait. Yes. Somewhere else. I think I can make that work. Well, hurry. Yes, very well. Oh, Mike? Oh, what's the matter, Miss Anne? Matter? Oh, nothing, Mike. I was just talking to Sprightly, that's all. Listen, Mike, we've been unavoidably detained, so we won't be able to drive uptown with you. No? <laughs> well, now that's too bad, Miss Anne. But how about we meet you in a few minutes, Mike? At the Rio Rita Club? The Rio Rita? Oh, I see. You want me to meet you at the Rio Rita Club, did you say? Yes, that's right, Mike. You'll be there? Yeah, I'll be there. Bye, Miss Anne. Goodbye. Well, Mr. Schlegel, was my performance satisfactory? Yes, thank you, Miss Rogers, for being so cooperative. I sincerely regret that I cannot be equally obliging, but when one's life and liberty are at stake... Life and liberty? And a few moments ago you mentioned the unusual circumstances under which this picture entered America? I think I'm beginning to understand the situation, Mr. Schlegel. Really? Yes, the picture entered America by Nazi submarine, didn't it? Wait, what now? Exactly, dear lady. A submarine. You are very clever to have guessed that. I'll tell you something else that I figured out. That painting is just a small part of a large stash of stolen Nazi loot. The art masterpieces that were robbed from museums in France, Belgium, Holland, and everywhere else they've invaded, as well as from the thousands of innocent citizens that Hitler and his henchmen have killed or imprisoned in Nazi concentration camps. Quite correct, Miss Rogers. You Nazi idiots! You don't really expect to get away with this thing, do you? 
Don't you realize that no matter how many museums and art collections you plunder, those treasures will be restored to their rightful owners sooner or later after you've been defeated? Possibly, Miss Rogers, possibly. The fact remains, however, we are now selling them for cash to keep our troops on the battlefield. And, as I can testify from experience, art collectors are a strange people. They are typically more interested in possession than in asking where something came from. But now, enough of this. I cannot stay here talking and talking all night long. What are you going to do? Yeah, what are you going to... Outside of our organization, only two people in America know that August Schlegel, art dealer, is really a distributor for stolen masterpieces. Obviously, I cannot afford to let this knowledge leave this room. So, if you'd be kind enough to turn and face me, both of you... You, you just shoot us in cold blood? Schlegel, you must be insane. People will hear the shots. You'll be caught. No one saw me enter this building. I was very careful about that, and I believe I can get to the fire escape before... Stick him up, you. What is this? How? Be careful, Mike. He's got a gun. Hit the floor, Annie. Oh! Oh! Mike, are you all right? Are you hurt? Not me, Miss Annie. <laughs> Not... <laughs> Them, them bullets, them bullets never even came near me. That guy couldn't hit a barn door. <laughs> How about him? Is he? No, I just fired in his direction to scare him. He fell backward, slipped, and hit his head on the table pretty hard. <laughs> so he's he's just knocked out. He'll be okay. Mark, thanks for getting here so quick. I mean, if you had gotten here a minute or two later, we probably wouldn't be breathing right now. Uh, it was nothing, Miss Sprightly. <laughs> it's just part of the job. <laughs> Wait, hey. Why is that picture of good St. Patrick down there laying on the floor? We got it at the auction house. It was supposed to be a gift for you, for everything you've done for us. But it accidentally fell on the floor, and the frame broke. Well, Miss Anne, Miss Sprightly... Let me tell you something. It's a beautiful picture as far as it goes. But the truth is, I've got a bone to pick with the artists and the storytellers, like the guy that made this one. What's that, Mark? They all seem to believe that St. Patrick drove actual snakes out of Ireland. That's nonsense. It wasn't any slimy green reptiles that he got rid of. The snakes that he chased out was the fake fortune tellers and witch doctors and other evil tricksters that were facing the people. Well, Patrick exposed them as frauds and they ran away like the cowards they were. They were the snakes that St. Patrick actually got rid of. Them and the evil men who were kidnapping people and selling them into slavery like they had done to him when he was a boy. But even though it's the true meaning of Patrick and the snakes, it's never in the pictures or the stories. Gosh, Mike, I never knew any of that. Well, it's like they say, every day you learn something new. And it's all true. You can look it up. Mike, look, he's coming out of it. Good. Uh, kick that gun of his this away, over here. Oh... Oh. Well, Mr. Schlegel, your game is ending a trifle differently than you intended. Yes. So I see, Miss Rogers. Congratulations. I said you were a very clever girl. Make that a very lucky one, Mr. Schlegel, to have such smart and caring friends. Golly, Miss Spritey. Does she mean me? If you don't mind, I'd like to know... This police officer, how did you tell him? A private joke of ours that simply turned out to be very helpful. Lieutenant Flanagan knew I was in trouble when you allowed me to mention the Rio Rita Club. Rio? The Rio Rita Club? But what does a Spanish nightclub got to do with... <laughs> <laughs>
Thank you for tuning in to Hot Copy Radio Theater. We truly hope that you enjoyed our presentation of A Bid for Trouble, a lost episode of the radio audio drama Hot Copy, originally broadcast on Sunday, June 18th, 1944. Our cast on this episode featured Rhonda Sigler Ware as Ann Rogers, Samantha Thompson as Sprightly Poole, Jerry Kokich as Lieutenant Mike Flanagan, Dan Ware as August Shagel, Christian Newhouse as Stefan, Pete Lutz as the auctioneer. The following voices were also heard on this episode. Frank Guglielmelli, Stephen Fisher, Kelsey Olivieri, Aaron Summonsby, Glenn Haskell, Kit Karen, and yours truly, Logan Smith, as your announcer. This episode was adapted from the original script written by Nelson S. Bond. All sound effects are from freesound.org. Hot Copy Radio Theater is produced and edited under the direction of Jim Goodluck. Now, if you like this show, please take a moment of your time and go to Apple Podcasts, also known as iTunes, then give a five-star rating and review for Hot Copy Radio Theater. And, if your favorite streaming service carries this show and allows you to give a rating, please be sure to rate us on there also. Finally, if you would like to contact any of the voice actors from this episode, or if you have any comments, questions, or suggestions in regard to this show, please send an email to hotcopyradiotheater at gmail.com. You can also follow the show on Twitter as at Hot Copy Radio. In addition, we have a Facebook page where you can make comments and give feedback. We invite you to tune in again on the 10th of each month for another thrilling presentation of Hot Copy Radio Theater. 